This is going to be the lecture video to go with our in-person lecture on August 26th or 27th. We're going to be talking about solving inequalities here. Here you see a problem on your screen. I'm going to put a break in uh, right here for you to type in what you think the solution is. Okay, now let's solve it. Uh, so uh, inverse operations in the balancing method. If we have like terms, we should combine those very first thing. I see some like terms right here with the 6x and the negative 3x. They've got the same variable, so they're like terms. Those combine by adding their coefficients to be just a 3x and keep the remaining term of the plus 5. And then on this side, our constants are like terms, the 11 and the negative 7. They combine. 11 minus 7 is 4, so now I've got 3x plus 4, it's a positive 4. Uh, now I've got like terms on opposite sides, so you do a inverse operation to combine them, and whatever you do to one side you must do to both sides. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. On both sides it cancels and I'm left with the equation 4 equals 5. All right, so what happens when we solve this? Well, all of the variables cancel out, and I'm left with a false statement. So how do we report our answer? Well, we're trying to tell somebody what does x equal. Well, there's no value I can plug in for x that's going to make this equation true. There's, there's no value that's going to make it balance, so we say no solution. And the shorthand for that, circle with a line through it. All right, another one for you to try. Now let's solve it. I'm going to combine like terms again. 4x plus 5 equals 4x plus 5. These two sides are already identical. I still want to go through the motions of subtracting 4x from both sides so I can get this down to the very simple equation 5 equals 5. This here, we call this an identity. Uh, and although I haven't said it yet, um, you should be taking notes on this. Hopefully you've already put the date at the top of your notes. I always like to see that. Help you stay organized. You should be trying this problem in your notes. All right, so an identity. Something that is just so true that there's no use arguing it. 5 equals 5. I don't need to prove this any further. It is just true by definition. Uh, and if I reach an identity through legal solving steps, then that means that there's no value I can plug in for x that won't make this true. Every single real number, if I plug it in for x, it's going to make this balance. So we say that this has infinite solutions. So infinite solutions. You could also say, and this is slightly different, but it does work in this case, all real numbers. Uh, now it's possible to have infinite solutions but not have all real numbers and that's we're actually going to see that today with inequalities this is a situation where you can say both or the shorthand would be to say x equals our double struck r which is an r with two lines standing in for the real numbers okay uh, if you want the safer bet it's actually to write infinite solutions because that covers both all real numbers situations and situations where we have infinite solutions but it's not all real numbers so this is your safer bet it's just to say infinite solutions when you run into these okay uh, goal today is to review how to solve and graph inequalities are we this anytime you use the words like fewer than more than at least you could think of it as an inequality and we use these kinds of this kind of language all the time in our day-to-day -day life you know uh, it's rare that you want exactly something. Normally it's you want at least or no more than something. Um, you know, there's, if there's some wiggle room in one direction, we're going to use an inequality. All right, so let's talk about how to graph an inequality. Here we have our real number line. Every number in order represented on a line. Then part of this line is made bold with this arrow. Now pay special attention here, the fact that this circle is open 
gives us extra information. All right, so what this here is representing, this is a graph, it's just a one-dimensional graph. It is representing all of the numbers less than negative two. All right, but this is important. This was an open circle, so it's not including negative two. So if I say I want fewer than negative two, then negative two doesn't work because it has to be less than. You can, it's not, uh, it does not satisfy the inequality to be equal to negative two. It's gotta be less than. All right, so you can probably guess what we would do if we wanted to include negative two, we would uh, fill in that circle and make it a closed dot. All right, so here's how we can graph all of these relationships between x and three on a number line. If x is equal to three, this is very easy. You've got all your numbers on the number line. And then just at three, we have a closed dot. This is the only number that x can be. No arrow connected to it, just a closed dot. But if the variable x is allowed to be greater than or equal to three, Then we want our bold line to cover every value that makes this inequality true. So three works. So three gets a closed dot. Four works, five works, six works. So that's why the arrow goes this way. And I always, although you saw the arrow was right along the line here, when I graph, I put it above the line to make it easier to see. Uh, arrow going to the right. All right, I bet you can figure out the rest of these on your own, so I'm just gonna do them real quick so that we have them in our notes. This would be a closed dot at three, arrow going to the left. This would be open dot at three, arrow going to the right, and color change for the fun of it, two, three, four, open dot at three, arrow going to the left. So here's a shortcut for pointing that arrow so that you don't have to think about what values make this inequality true, is as long as the variable is on the left, you can just make the end of the arrow face the same way as this inequality. So it looks like it's pointing to the right, that matches here. This one looks like it's pointing to the left, matches here. Where that trick breaks down is if the variable is on the right, then it's backwards and you have to switch it around before trying to graph it. Okay, compound inequalities. Uh, so we can, uh, this is very common um, when we want to kind of bracket in a variable between a minimum and a maximum, we can represent that uh, in a single line with two inequality symbols. And this can be, um, I'm not gonna say solved, but simplified using inverse operations in the balancing method. But when I say balancing method here, whatever we do to one expression, we have to do to all three. So it's not a both sides, it's an all three sides situation. So copy down this compound inequality, negative four is less than two X, which is also less than or equal to eight. I want that X to be by itself. So I divide it by two but the balancing method says I've got to do that to all sides. All right, and now I get that negative two is less than x is less than or equal to four. All right, this is the algebraic representation of our solution of all the values of x that work. Now let's see if we can put that on a number line. All right, when they're written in a single line like this, it's always an interval on our number line. We always have a minimum, and a maximum, we're always shading the numbers in between. And then we just look at the symbols to figure out if we want to put a open dot or a closed dot at the ends. All right, so if it's in a single line, it's always an interval. All right, we can set up compound inequalities 
so that we, what we get uh, is a line with a gap in it. So imagine that the arrows are actually pointing out the other ways, but we can't do it in a single line like this. We have to write two separate inequalities and then join them with the word or, which is what we're gonna see right here. Let's go ahead, let's make this number line a little bit better. Let's add in. Okay. Just to show that this is a number line. You don't have to do this every time. But. All right, so all of the values that make this compound inequality true, meaning that it makes both parts true, land in this interval, not including negative two, but including four. Okay, so here we see this is still a compound inequality, but it's two separate inequalities joined by that word or. If, when we're dealing with this, we're just gonna solve each inequality separately. And by solve, I mean isolate the variable on the left side of the inequality symbol. So over here, I'll subtract seven from both sides. I get k is greater than or equal to negative one. And over here, I'm gonna subtract eight from both sides. So that k is less than negative five. Still have that word or in the middle. So now I can just get a number line going. The only numbers I see are a negative one and a negative five. So I'm just gonna make sure that those are on my number line and put them in the right order. Be easy to switch those up, but negative five occurs before negative one in our number line. And then just graph them separately. K is greater than or equal to negative one. So that means close dot at negative one. I wanna include that. And the greater side is to the right. Also, because the variable's on the left, I can use the trick that the inequality points in the correct direction. Open circle at negative five, arrow going to the left. So can you graph it? Yes, we can. It's like a continuous line with this gap from negative five to negative one. All right. Last one, got another or one. K over four is greater than or equal to zero. You multiply both sides by four. So that K is greater than or equal to zero. Don't graph it quite yet. Let's finish solving the other one. Four plus K is less than zero. Subtract four from both sides. K is less than negative four. Uh, now we can graph it. So close dot at zero. Arrows come in this way. Open dot at negative four. Arrows going this way. All right, I think that is going to be good for today's lesson. I'm going to put in a couple more problems for you to solve here. There's still a lot more with compound inequalities, situations where we can have um, infinite solutions and no solutions, uh, but we're going to see those coming up uh, in the next lecture. All right, have a good rest of your day.